This is the third integration by parts video. Uh, the goal is to go over some more complicated examples where we kind of combine integration by parts with some other techniques. All right, and so the first problem here um, is a problem you've seen before when we were doing u substitution. This problem actually works if we just do u equals the square root of x, which is x to the 1 half, and then du is the derivative of that, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx, but that can be rewritten as 1 over 2 square root of x dx. So we're able to get that to work because we can move the square root of x from the bottom and move it next to the dx. We're allowed to do that because the cosine on the left there is really over 1, and so multiplying them we would get back to the original. Um, but we need a 2 in the bottom. So to get a 2 in the bottom, what we've really done is multiplied by 1 half. So because we multiply inside by 1 half, we multiply outside by 2. And so then this is 2 integral cosine of u du. And the integral of cosine u is positive sine. And so we get 2 sine of the square root of x plus c. And that's the answer. On the second problem, it should be clear that this is more challenging than the one above because the du is not there. And so this is a problem where you might try integration by parts. I think if you try integration by parts, you could get this to work out where u is cosine of square root of x and dv is dx. Might be worth trying to see if you get the same thing. We're going to try this actually with u substitution first. And so we're going to do the same thing. u is square root of x, du then is 1 over 2 square root of x dx. And at first thought, it looks like that's probably not going to work. But you do a good bit of work to kind of force this to work out. And so the way you can do that is I can multiply here by 1 over, let's do it in a different color so it's clear, but I can do it by 1 over 2 radical x. Now, if I do that, I also need to multiply by 2. That takes care of the 2 in the bottom. I am not allowed to just multiply by 1 over radical x unless I also multiply by the square root of x. I cannot pull the x outside, so what we do is we put it there. Now most of the time what we did there probably won't work into a form that's useful, but here it does. So I can replace the square root of x at the beginning of the integral with u. I also have cosine of u. And then the end part, 1 over 2 square root of x dx, is du. That's not the form probably we were thinking it, we would match, but now this is integration by parts. So because I've already used u, I'm going to use different letters for the integration by parts. But we're going to say, okay, v then is u, and dw is cosine u du dv then is the derivative of u which is just 1 du and w is the derivative of cosine u i'm sorry the antiderivative of cosine u du which is positive sine of u so now we get two times the integration by parts formula so that's u sine u minus the integral of w dv so that's sine u du I'm going to take a step to distribute the two. And now we're going to do the antiderivative of sine u du, which is negative cosine. So we get plus 2 cosine of u. And then u from the beginning was square root of x. So we get 2 square root x sine square root x plus 2 cosine square root x plus c. And that's the answer. Again, that's a weird problem, but it's something worth thinking about the various techniques that we're able to combine. Um, one thing that you do want to get good at, and it's very difficult to get good at, is to be able to approach problems in different ways and try different things to see if we can get them to work. And so that's one way to do this problem. On number three, 
we're going to compare, let's look at 3 and 4 together. So number 3 is going to be uh, the integral of sine of natural log x over x dx. And number 4 is going to be the integral of sine of natural log x dx. Okay, so on number one, it's like the or number three, it's like the first problem where a simple u substitution works. So u equals natural log x, du is one over x dx, and so we can just move the one over x from the bottom, and we've got it set up in a basic form. And so this is negative cosine of u plus c which is negative cosine of natural log x plus c. And at this stage in the class, it should probably be getting to where that's a relatively easy problem. On problem two, that approach does not work well. Um, and there are two approaches that I actually want to go through. So one is to do it like the last problem, where we kind of force that to work. And I'm going to do that second. Um, but another way to do it is to try integration by parts. So to do integration by parts, the only real option would be to let u equal everything except dx and let dv equal dx. And that's it because sine, it, the natural log of x is like inside of sine. It's not like sine times natural log x. It's not that. Um, it's inside of sine. So we can't like separate those. So du is the derivative of this, which would be cosine of x, or I'm sorry, cosine of natural log x times 1 over x dx, and v would equal x, and the times 1 over x is from the chain rule. So then we do uv, so uv is x sine of natural log x minus v du, and the x and the 1 over x cancel. And so we get it to that integral. Now, that integral is almost identical to the original integral, except that it's cosine. And so if we do integration by parts again, it should be fairly clear that we're going to get back to the original integral. And then that'll be one where we can solve for the integral um, in an equation at the end of the problem. And so we're going to set it up where we let u equal cosine of natural log x this time. dv is dx du is negative sine of natural log x times 1 over x dx, and v is x. So we apply integration by parts. So we get x sine of log x minus the entire integration by parts formula. So minus bracket uv, that's x cosine of log x, minus negative, so plus, vdu, which gets us sine of natural log x dx, because the x and the 1 over x cancel. So now let's take a step to distribute the negative. So we get x sine of natural log x minus x cosine of natural log x minus the integral of sine of natural log x dx. And now that's the same integral that we started with. So we stop with that line of work and we say, okay, the original integral sine of natural log x dx is equal to that last line. And so we get it to here. And now we're going to add that integral to both sides. So when we do that, we get 2 times the integral of sine of natural log x dx equals x sine of natural log x minus x cosine of natural log x. And now we want to get rid of the 2. So we multiply by 1 half or divide by 2. So we say, okay, the original integral x sine of log x is 1 half x sine of natural log x minus 1 half x cosine of natural log x 
plus C. And that, even though that's a lot of work, that's the way I would recommend doing the problem. I think that's the most straightforward way to approach this problem. I want to show a different way to start it, and it probably won't finish this version on the video, but um, if you go back and look at the first two problems we did, it's kind of like, okay, the first one is where the easy U substitution works, and then we kind of forced the U sub to work on the second problem. And that should work on problem three and four, where three has this easy U substitution that works. Um, so we should be able to force it to work on problem four, or at least that's something worth trying. Um, I think it ends up being harder, which is why I started it uh, the way that we did problem four. But I want to show the other option for problem four. So if we have the integral of sine log x dx, we would like this to work where u is natural log x and du is 1 over x dx. So to force that in, we can multiply inside here by 1 over x. Unfortunately, we cannot multiply outside by the reciprocal, but we can multiply in front by the reciprocal. The reason this is more complicated than the problem way back up here is that here, this was u, and down here, this is not u, unfortunately. There's a way to fix that, but you need to remember your the properties of logs fairly well. So x is the same thing as e to the natural log of x. And so we can rewrite it that way, or we could solve for x in the problem or in the equation on the left, there's a couple ways to go about this. But now, either way, this breaks down to the problem e to the u sine of u du, which is now an integration by parts that you do twice, and it cycles back to the original integral. This is like what we were doing on the last video on integration by parts too. Okay, you would end up with the same answer. Uh, it might be worth for practice trying that and making sure you do get the same thing that we got on the previous problem. Okay, I want to look at one more problem um, on this video. And so we're going to look at the integral of x to the fifth cosine of x to the third dx. And so the approach on this that ends up working is that we let u equal x to the third and, and the reason we might think to do that is that the x to the third is inside of cosine. If we start thinking of parts immediately, there's not a good way to do the antiderivative of cosine of just x cubed. Uh, we would need to do some more work. So there is a way to approach this with parts, but I think it's easier to start it with u substitution. If we do this, du then is 3x squared dx. Well, we can get the 3x squared by splitting up the x to the fifth. And so I'm going to write that in purple just so we can kind of emphasize that. That's going to leave x squared. So the x to the third and the x squared multiplied together, that gets us the x to the fifth that we started with. So when I separate the x squared, it leaves x cubed. I think I said it leaves x squared, but it leaves x cubed there. The reason that's useful is because now we've almost got du at the end of the problem. And so I'm going to put a 3 in, and I'm just going to break this into a second step just because to emphasize it, but you could do this in one step. Um, so we put 3 there, and we put one third out here. And now this is the du. And please don't randomly change powers when you're doing problems. That should be x to the third. And so now we get one third integral u cosine u du. And now we're not done, but now this is an easy integration by parts. So we can set this up where we do, instead of u and dv, we're going to do v and dw. So v is u, dw is cosine u du, dv is 1 du, and w is sine of u. So we get one third times VW, that's U sine U, minus the integral 
of W D V, so that's sine U D U. And now I'm going to do two steps at once. So we're going to distribute the U and do the antiderivative. Or I'm sorry, distribute the one third and do the antiderivative of sine. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, which changes that to a plus, and the one third distributes. The U originally was x to the third. So we replace the U's with that. And once we do that, we're then done. And that's the answer on this problem. Okay, and so real quick, it would be worth noting that if I had the problem instead as like x to the eighth cosine of x to the third, I could do something similar where I would be left with x to the sixth cosine of x to the third uh, times x squared dx. I could still get the 3 and the 1 third. So 3 here and 1 third. And now because this x to the sixth part is a nice, easy multiple of 3, then we can do this problem the same way, except that this ends up being u squared cosine of u du. And now that's a little bit more complicated integration by parts because you have to do it twice, but it is doable. So you can do that if at this stage where the you have the six here, if you ended up with six, nine, or tw uh, 12, any multiple of the original power of x, it could also work for a lot of different combinations. Again, something worth practicing that you'll see in the homework and on quizzes. Um, but th this video again was just kind of looking at some exceptions, some weird ways to apply integration by parts, but techniques that are definitely very important to understand. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.